Hello, everyone. My name is Erik Hyppä. I'm a quantum engineer at IQM and a PhD student at Aalto University. Today, I tell you about the Unimon, that is a new superconducting qubit with the novel island free circuit. We have developed the Unimon at IQM in collaboration with QCT Labs at Aalto University. In my talk, I will present the theory of the Unimon, after which I present our first experimental results. I would like to remind you that my presentation is the first part of a back-to-back -back talk, and Suman Kundu will present more experimental results. I begin with a brief motivation and tell you why it is relevant to study new types of superconducting qubits. As you probably know, superconducting circuits provide one of the most promising architectures for quantum computation. However, the single and two qubit gate errors are still limiting the computational power of current quantum computers. These gate errors can be caused by multiple factors. First, the qubit can leave the computational subspace if the qubit circuit is only weakly unharmonic, like in a transform. This phenomenon is known as leakage. Secondly, noise in the environment of the qubit can lead to relaxation and defacing errors. Other error sources include calibration errors, cost talk, or some residual interactions. One solution to reduce gate errors is to design novel qubit circuits that help to mitigate some or multiple of these error sources. We have designed the Unimon to reduce errors related to leakage and decoherence. Now I will introduce you to the Unimon. I begin by summarizing some advantages of the qubit, after which I explain the theoretical background behind these advantages. First of all, the Unimon has a higher unharmonicity than in transform qubits. This should enable faster single qubit gates with lower leakage errors. Secondly, the Unimon is protected against low frequency charge noise and magnetic flux noise. The Unimon also has a simple structure containing only a single Joseph conjunction and also importantly, no superinductors are needed in the Unimon. Now, similarly to some existing superconducting qubit types, the Unimon can be roughly described with a circuit containing a capacitor, an inductor, and a Josephson element in parallel. However, the Unimon is located in a new regime of the periodic table of superconducting qubits. In the figure, transforms are located on the y axis since their inductive energy is zero. The green fluxoniums have a small inductive energy due to the large superinductance. The Unimon is depicted with a black star. The Unimon is in an unexplored parameter regime where the inductance is small and the inductive energy is as large as the Josephson energy. Now I will tell you how we implement the Unimon. The Unimon consists of a grounded coplanar waveguide resonator the center conductor of which is interrupted by a single Josephson junction. The figure here represents a schematic of the Unimon circuit. Similarly to a lambda over two resonator, the Unimon circuit supports multiple normal modes. Since the Josephson junction is a nonlinear circuit element, the normal modes that have some current running through the junction are converted into unharmonic oscillators. We use the unharmonic mode with the lowest frequency as the qubit. If we apply an external magnetic flux through the two loops, the superconducting phase of the junction can be biased and we can also tune the qubit frequency. Importantly, the Unimon has a gradiometric structure and therefore the qubit is only sensitive to the difference of the external fluxes. This provides protection against flux noise. You can also see that the junction is inductively shunted by the center conductor. This makes the circuit island free and insensitive to low frequency charge noise. Next, I will briefly explain the key ideas that are needed to derive the Hamiltonian of the distributed Unimon circuit. As the starting point, I use the distributed element circuit model shown at the bottom of the slide. And in the derivation, we take the following steps. First, we solve the classical normal mode frequencies and voltage envelope functions by approximating the Josephson junction as a linear inductor. Then we make a single mode approximation and neglect all other modes apart from the mode that we use as a qubit. Finally, we quantize the classical Hamiltonian of the qubit mode and enforce the canonical commutation relation between the charge and phase operators. 
This procedure gives us a result that is a bit similar to the Hamiltonian of a fluxonium. On the right, I'm showing you a theoretical prediction for the qubit frequency and the unharmonicity as a function of the external flux difference for some realistic parameter values. At the half flux quantum point, there is a flux insensitive sweet spot at which the qubit is first order insensitive to flux noise. In this example, the sweet spot corresponds to an enhanced unharmonicity of plus 500 megahertz. And this is the optimal operating point of the Unimon. Now I try to provide you some intuition why the unharmonicity is enhanced at the half flux quantum point. At this point, we, make, we can make a fourth order approximation for the Hamiltonian as shown on the slide. In the Unimon regime, the Josephson energy is almost as large as the inductive energy. Therefore, the quadratic inductive energy is almost fully canceled by the quadratic contribution of the Josephson energy. The unharmonic higher order terms are now dominating and therefore the unharmonicity is increased. This can also be seen from the figures that illustrate the potential energy of the Unimon as a function of the Josephson phase. This cancellation effect has some similarities to the quantum qubit introduced by Will Oliver's group a few years back. As an important difference, we use a geometric inductor instead of a short junction array to implement a truly quadratic inductive energy and a qubit that is fully protected against low frequency charge noise. Now I will present some highlights of the first experimental results. To study the Unimon experimentally, we fabricated some single qubit Unimon samples. In the samples, each of the Unimons was coupled to an individual readout resonator, which made it possible to use dispersive readout. Each of the qubits was also coupled to an individual microwave drive line. Finally, we used an external coil to control the flux deterrence. Here, I now show you some experimentally measured unharmonicities for five unimons as a function of the measured Josephson energy. Note that the Copeland wavelet structure was equal for all of the qubits, but the Josephson energies are different. First of all, we see that the measured unharmonicities agree well with the theoretical model that I'm illustrating with the orange line. Secondly, we can see that the unharmonicity increases as the Josephson energy approaches the inductive energy and more and more the second order potential energy terms are canceled. As a final remark, the unharmonicities of qubits A, B, and C are significantly higher than the conventional unharmonicity of transmont qubits. Finally, I will show you that it is possible to implement fast and high fidelity single qubit plates with the Unimon. We studied this with one of the qubits and the qubit had a T1 and T2 of approximately 10 microseconds. On the left, you can see the results of an example interleaved randomized benchmarking experiment. In the experiment, we used track pulses and a gate duration of 20 nanoseconds. Based on the experiment, we measured a gate fidelity as high as 99.9%. When we studied the gate fidelity as a function of gate duration, we learned that the gate fidelity exceeds 99.9% for 13 nanosecond gates. We also observed that the gate fidelity was close to the coherence limit for all of the gate durations. This suggests that the gate duration could have been made even shorter while retaining a high fidelity. As a summary, I have presented the Unimon that is a new island-free superconducting qubit that has some quite nice properties. First, the Unimon has a relatively high unharmonicity. Second, the Unimon is protected against charge and flux noise. Third, the Unimon has a simple structure in which there is only a single Josephson junction and also no superinductors are needed. Our theoretical and experimental results indicate that in the future, the Unimon is a potential candidate for implementing record high single qubit gates. In the second part of this talk, Suman Kundu will present more experimental results and, for example, show you the spectrum of the qubit. I would like to finish my talk by thanking you and all my co-authors. Stay tuned, since we are currently preparing a manuscript 
that will soon be in archive.